I didn't particularly want to film September's card this early. It's only August 10th, but here's why. Um, I just got cast as Yvette, the a sexy French maid in Clue. Um, and school starts back for me as far as planning days in like three days. So I'm about to be really busy for the next like month and a half. Clue opens the first weekend in October. So September is going to be wild. So I need to go ahead and pull a card, find out what the topic is for September. That way, whenever I have a chance to, I can go ahead and start the book. I can't believe this is almost over. Um, I'm really excited about this. I think I might continue it next year, but I don't know. I might try to do something different. All right, let's see. Remember, this is for September. I like that one. It's going to be hard to get, but I like that one. Okay. Read a book that's a debut novel. And see, that's... Hmm. It could still be a debut novel and not be debuting this year. You know what? You know? Hmm. I'm going to think on this one. Because I've got a bunch of debuts in here. I, <laughs> I have a bunch of unread owl crates, and that's perfect for that. Um, so it's probably going to be one of those. I also may see if I can factor it into some of the other readathon things that I'm doing. Um, if like for September, the Literally Dead Book Club or, um, the Bur Buzzwordathon for September is also a debut novel. Um, I'll see what I can do for that. But otherwise, I might just look at my Owl Crate shelf and just pick one of those. Again, this is what the topic is. Once I have a book for it, I will fill you in. Good news. Apparently, the Literally Dead Book Club for September is uh, on Strilio, and it is a horror debut, and I already have access to it on Libro FM, so um, I think I'm going to count that as the debut. I don't have a physical copy of the book. Um, hopefully, I like it. It's literary horror. Um, that's usually my bag, so if I like it, I'll get a copy of it, and then I'll have a copy to add to the rest of the books I've been collecting this year for the Gina's like card challenge. Um, but that's exciting. That means it's one less thing I have to worry about. I can listen to an audiobook while I drive to and from rehearsal. <sighs> Thank God. <laughs> I love it when stuff works out. Okay, hear me out. Um, September's card challenge is a debut novel. I'm listening to Monstrilio for the Literally Dead Book Club. And I don't really like it. So I don't want to buy a copy. But I want to physically have copies of everything for the card deck challenge. So I'm pivoting and I'm gonna make the Henna Wars my book for a debut novel because this is also gonna be for the buzzwordathon for like game words, so like war. So this is gonna be what I read now for September. Yes, it's already like the seventh. No, I don't wanna talk about it. I'm, and I'm sad about Monstrilio. I really wanted to like it. I love books that deal with grief in like creative ways, but it's it was kind of pushed as literary horror. It's a lot more literary than it is horror. And I'm just having a hard time with it. It's not a bad book. I just don't think it was written for me. And that's fine. I mean, I think it's going to find its audience. But it's it's not it's not doing it. So maybe if the point of views had been different, if there had been less, or maybe it had been focused on one, I would be able to get involved. But right now, no. So the update on the September card challenge is I'm... I'm, I'm pivoting the book I'm choosing. I'll get back to you when I finish this and let you know my thoughts on it. Here's the situation. It is September 17th. I am very close to finishing the Henna Wars, which as we know is the September book for the Gina card challenge. But I am swiftly approaching some really um, busy times. So next week is pretty normal. But the week after next, the very last week of September, is homecoming, like spirit week for us at school. It is also like the last week before tech week. So the first week of October is tech week. So I'm thinking I need to go ahead and pick a card for October um, and pick a book to have ready. That way when I kind of like finish the next things, I can pick that up. We're also, we've started The Old Man in the Sea with my juniors. I've started The Catcher in the Rye for independent reading and we're going to start night in October so <laughs> I'm going to be really busy I need to go ahead and have this picked out um I, I, I I'm, I'm probably bit off a little bit more than I can chew for the like fall part of this challenge but if I survive spring I can survive this so here we go 
Oh my gosh, please be something good. I, I hate that I had to switch books halfway for the September one. This one's calling to me, but I think I'm going to go with this one. Please be good. Read a book that has an orange cover. Oh my God, give me a second. I'm going to be reading Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones. Um, I was going to pick this up anyway. Oh my God, this is this is great. Okay, so you don't know this, but I posted an Instagram thing this morning asking if I should read My Heart is a Chainsaw or Axiom's End for like a review before I read their sequels. This has an orange cover. It is a horror book, so it's spooky season appropriate. Um, it's also going to help me finish the books in the freezer challenge because the only one I haven't done is a book with an orange cover. I think it's orange to cover. It might be green and black. I don't know. But either way, I get to read this. And that, that works perfectly. Oh, my God. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, so October is how fitting. I'm so glad I didn't go with my first choice. And that, like, the one that seemed obvious. I'm glad I went with this one. Because this is perfect for October. Oh, my God. You you can't write this stuff. Okay, so October is orange cover. Amazing. Um, I'll see you again in a little bit. Um, or actually, you'll see me before this with the Hen of Wars thing. I gotta, I'll be filming it after this because uh, my life is chaotic. All right, bye. Hi, it's editing Samantha here uh, coming at you live with whatever plague my sophomores decided to bring into school last week. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to make this brief. But I looked through Hi, Pepper. This video is just going to be featuring all of my cats. Um, I didn't do any kind of review for the Hen Wars. I really did like the Hen Wars. Um, I'm going to put this copy in my classroom library because I already have two copies. So it's a good group book. Um, it tackles a very serious topic of like cultural appropriation. And so I'm not exactly the person to weigh in on that. Whether it was you know, done well, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was very nuanced and balanced. Um, and I really did like the kind of obliviousness of our main character, um, who didn't realize that somebody liked her. And, uh, I don't know. It was a very good story. Now, some of the, the family cultural stuff was really heartbreaking to me. Um, I was raised, uh, incredibly Christian. So there's some overlap of, you know, the expectations of girls versus boys and if you're going to get married and what you're going to do. And so, like, that stuff did impact me so it's it's got some um some depths to it that I think are going to relate to kids I would put it with probably the poet x honestly as far as conversations go um and I'm going to recommend it to the same students I have that like to poet x but anyway I just stop talking now or my lungs are going to jump out of my body and quit okay bye so I reread my heart is a chainsaw in anticipation for reading don't Fear the Reaper, um, and I remember that I did in fact love it, and it's still a favorite. I'm picking up the sequel, and like the second chapter, actually the first one too, it's a doozy. It's great. It's very much like cold open uh, to a horror movie kind of thing, um, and then the second chapter is like this very hands-off description of the kind of main baddie in this book and the things he, he's done, and they are unhinged. Um, and then you get reintroduced to the main character of My Heart of the Chainsaw. Um, I, I was not prepared to be emotionally impacted by that chapter, and I was. Um, and so I had to kind of put it down for a little while, but I'm ready to pick it back up. I'm hoping it's going to be good. Um, I didn't realize until a little while ago, talking to Gina, she has read this. And she liked this one better than the second one. So it's even more fitting that this is the October book for her little card challenge. So I'm hoping I will also like it. Um, I, I think he would have to do some crazy stuff for me not to like it. Um, obviously I've been dreading it a little bit because I do really like My Heart is a Chainsaw and I thought it was a really good standalone. I really like the ambiguity of the ending and sort of like what was going on from there. But knowing that it has a sequel, when I reread it, it made sense for it to have a sequel. Like, yeah, you know, she's going to get frame for all this stuff because it was recording and and then you know this person died but this person did you know I, it, it's gonna make sense so I'm looking forward to it we're gonna see what happens uh, I have I have good hopes I'll, I'll let you know I feel like I'm always filming me right I wash my hair and I look like a chaotic mess but you're all just gonna have to deal with this um, because this is the wrap up for Don't Fear the Reaper. I finally finished it. It's the sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw. I've been putting off reading it because I was scared it wasn't going to live up to the hype. Um, it, it's probably one of the best sequels I've ever read. It is, it is without 
fail. Probably one of the best sequels. I love that Stephen Graham Jones can marry, like, character with horror. And it's horrific. The things that happen in here, and, like, immediately, you almost want to put the book down. So, like, this, it's so good. It's so good. I'm very nervous about the third one now, but I'm very excited um, because this was handled so well. Um, of course, I like the first one. It, it feels like you're just watching somebody who's obsessed with horror go about their day, but then this one is like that person has to actually deal with stuff. Um, if you like slashers, but you like smart slashers, this is the one for you. It's believable, and it's not. No, it's got a little bit of something for everybody, but either way, this covers the October pick for Gina's Card Deck Challenge for the orange cover, and it covers Books in the Freezer, book with an orange cover. So, this has been read, and since it is October 30th, tomorrow's Halloween, it is now time to choose a new card for November. I actually have a lot of hesitancy about this particular card because I'm giving myself like no time at all to read, um, and I'm in a Christmas carol, so I'm at rehearsals all the time. In fact, I'm going to rehearsal in about 10 minutes. Um, I can read while I'm at rehearsal. That's, that's not a big deal. Um, I can read in my off times when I'm teaching or on weekends, but just finding the time is going to be a struggle, um, and I have to have this whole thing done by December 15th, so really set myself up perfectly here. Okay, please be kind to me, please be kind to me, please be kind to me. Okay, okay, okay. Ready? A book that is set in North Carolina. A book that is set in North Carolina. I have a couple of options for that one, actually. And there's actually a few that are on my, like, TBR. Like, immediate TBR that are set in North Carolina. So, give me a second. Let me pull those. So, if you know anything about books set in North Carolina, you know that, like, the first person that comes to your mind is Nicholas Sparks. Pretty much all of his books take place in North Carolina. Um, I've read most of them already, so there's nothing new to read. Um... I've also read the Emily Henry that takes place in North Carolina Book Lovers. I've read Joyland by Stephen King, which takes place in a fictional version of North Carolina. Which I guess they're all fictional versions of North Carolina. Um, there's one book that intrigues me I don't have on my shelf, but this is kind of a clear-the-shelf situation. But it's available on Kindle Unlimited, so I'm going to pick it up. It's So Many Beginnings, the remixed classic of Little Women. I'm intrigued by that, and it's available for free. Well, not for free, but on Kindle Unlimited, so I may pick it up. But these are the three that I have that I found on my actual shelves. The first and scariest option is Cold Mountain by Charles Frazier. I love the movie with Nicole Kidman and um, Jude Law. It's so good. Um, it's haunting and beautiful and sad and great. But reading that book in November feels like a challenge. Um, I also have The Devil's Tramping Grounds. This is a book I found at the thrift store. It doesn't have a jacket. But it's like short stories of mysteries and like spooky stuff that happened in North Carolina based on like a radio show. Um, so that's possible because that'd be really quick to kind of fly through. And then the last option is the Young Lahasi Writing Camp for Girls. Um, I have the actually the arc of this as well. Um, and I've been meaning to read it. So those are all three lovely options for books set in North Carolina. And I guess you're just not going to know. You're just not going to know until the end of the month which one I decided to actually read. Anyway, all right, but if I do it quick enough, I can start December's book early. So that's why, again, this one may win because it's shorter. This one may win because it's, like, literally short stories. Who knows? Who knows? I'm off to start one of these. Bye. Here I am once again coming at you live from not having combed my hair after a shower. I don't know why this is, like, part of my character now. Um, I finished the November book, uh, The Young Lassie Camp for Girls. It was a book. It sure was, uh, but it read really quick. I actually downloaded it on audiobook in case I needed to listen to it to and from rehearsal and read it, but like physically reading it took like no time at all. Um, so it is now November 10th, and I know what you're thinking. It's still November. You can't pull another card. It's not December yet. If I don't go ahead and start the, Nove the December book, I will not read a December book because I don't have all of December. Um, so I have our cards. This is the last one of the year. I hope it's a good one. We're all going to manifest good things, something easy that I can find on my shelves that maybe has an audiobook also. Maybe it's something I was already planning to read. That would be great. Oh, I'm nervous. Why am I nervous? Okay, okay, okay. Ooh. You pick one. This one? Okay. All right. 
read a book that books and Lala likes. Give me a second. I know exactly which book I'm going to read. I literally only had to like dip down and go into the books that are underneath me on the shelf. Um, because I tried to read this book last year for Buzzwordathon for like, I think monster or like creature words. It's Bunny by Mona Wad. I have been meaning to read this. I also have a student that recommended this after last semester because she really liked it. So read a book the books and Lala likes or reading Bunny. Fantastic. I love that for me. This has been really fun. I think what's going to happen is I'm going to actually do a full recap of all the books. They're actually living right here. Um, I've been pulling them aside and keeping them up there on the shelf. So that's fun. Um, yeah. So Bunny is the last book of the year. I think this is also a book Gina got me. So that's fitting. Okay. I'll come back to you with thoughts later. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, finished this I don't actually yeah I don't know what I think I truly don't know what I think um the, for the, the beginning of the book um it felt like reading a book written in that's Pepper she's in the library with me it felt like reading a book that was written in a different universe that was like adjacent to ours like multiversal it's pretty much like ours but they use certain language that we don't and different comparisons that we don't it also like the way violence was described throughout was weird um i'm not going to go into detail too much on like the ending and stuff but i had some suspicions the whole time about the nature of the people around her and honestly um i have I have thoughts about the reality of anybody in the text other than our narrator. Um, I like when it went to the collective we. I thought that was very clever. Um, I think there was some really beautiful descriptions of nature and um, internal struggle. And also, as a girl who loves Frankenstein, um, the concept of creating something and having a life of its own outside of you uh, is frightening. Like be it a, a book that you write that you put your soul into or be it a human that you've created um, out of something or many things. So I liked it. I'm glad that I picked this up. I can see why Books and Lala likes it. And I hope you guys are enjoying the feature. She's she's a screamy girl. Yeah, my screamy goblin daughter. You want me to pick you up? Come here. Come here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm not gonna drop you. You're good. Okay. Um, but if you're keeping up, that's it. That's all the books that I was supposed to read for the car challenge. So now I get to uh, kind of record a intro and possibly wrap up section for this to kind of introduce what the challenge was and how it went. Like overall, I kept all the books so I could kind of hold them up at the end, and then. Yeah, and then and then it's over. So now I have, uh, thank God, a couple weeks to edit it before her birthday, so I can post it. And this was really successful. I think I'll go over this in the the closing of it too. Um, I think I'm gonna do this again next year, and I'm also gonna keep it a secret next year. And the fact that she'll know next year I'm doing it, she can kind of try to guess which books I'm reading monthly that are from her card deck. Um, I think that'll be kind of cool. So anyway, I'm gonna do a actual wrap up now that should be what you see next i'm gonna go finish uncleaning my house or cleaning it from thanksgiving and decorating it for christmas would you like to help you just you just want attention okay okay i can give you that you're like a dog so weird okay so as you saw the first card was read a book that gina picks out for you again almost completely ruined the whole thing. Um, as far as I know that she knows, that's the only card I've used this year. Um, and it was for the wolf. And I would say this wasn't as good as I was hoping it was going to be. Like, you know, I had it really hyped up, but I did read both books. And I actually, I think I kind of like the second one better. I don't know. Their romance seemed more fully developed and the world building was better. Anyway, that was for January. February was... Read a book that you think your favorite character would like. Again, I had kind of a toss-up between, like, Katniss and 
uh, Jane Austen's Elizabeth Bennet. But I chose Elizabeth Bennet, and I think that was a good choice because the Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels was really funny, really good. I have not picked up any more in this series yet, but I'm looking forward to doing that in the next year because I found this delightful. It'll probably actually be in like one of my top books for the year, but I don't know yet. March was read a book that is about books, and funny enough, I probably could have used a book that I was reading for school for this because I read um, The Book Thief uh, during like a reading thing with my students, but I ended up going with The Shadow of the Wind because I meant to read it because I've been wanting to unhaul it. Like it did not seem interesting, but it se seemed interesting enough to keep it. I'm probably going to unhaul it now. Uh, it was not like standout enough to me to keep it, but it was at least entertaining. The audiobook was very well done. I would recommend the audio over reading it physically, um, but I think it was, it was doing a lot. It was, it insists upon itself. <laughs> Anyway, also, the description of scary, erotic, touching, and tragic, and thrilling, none of those things. None of those things. That person is lying to you. Anyway, April was a book that reminds you of Christmas, and I love Christmas. Um, I didn't get to decorate last year, so my decorations are up super early this year. Um, but the first book I picked for this was Hidden Sea by Gregory, Gregory Maguire. This is not Christmassy. It's supposed to be about the guy who, like, gives the Nutcracker to Clara in the Nutcracker. It, sure, I guess. Um, I'm gonna keep it. It's a signed first edition, so... Um, I'm gonna keep it. I love Gregory Maguire usually, but it wasn't like, it didn't deliver the Christmas like I wanted to, so instead I read the best Christmas pre pageant ever, and this was a very quick read, and this was very Christmassy. They did this as a play last year in a local town, and I'm really regretting I wasn't involved, but it would have been so fun. Anyway, that was April. May was Hand on the Cover. And um, this was also one of the first months where I finally had a little bit of free time. So I was able to like build Legos and listen to a book. So I listened to Thinner by Richard Bachman. Um, kind of on the fence with this one. Okay, so obviously I believe it's good. I think Richard Bachman's books are really, really good. Um, I know it's like, oh, it's Stephen King, but it's it, it's different. Bachman is kind of a depressing ending. But this book is clearly a product of its time and the stereotypes of its time. So you kind of have to go into it with that in mind. And I knew it. I knew what was going on and I knew what the ending was. Um, but I still... I still did enjoy it. Um, I wouldn't make this an all-out recommendation for people, though, but I think you have to go in knowing what you're getting out of it. For June, it was really challenging at first because I had to scroll through your Goodreads feed and read the first book you see that's on your TBR. So basically, what other people have posted, uh, hey, that one's also on my TBR. It was June, so like, okay, well, I don't want to make it, I don't want to make it gay it's Pride Month, we should be reading a gay book, and I got really lucky, I mean, again, you've seen it, um, that Night of the Living Queers was, like, the first one I saw, and I had an arc of this, I read it on my Kindle, and then I immediately pre-ordered it, because it is very, very good. Some of these stories really need to be their own, like, movies or miniseries. Um, if they decide to adapt this into a miniseries, and each, like, short story is its own episode, I would, I would love that. Um, cannot recommend this enough. I read it over the summer, and I found that to be great because, I don't know, summer and horror work so well together, but also this would be really good for a, um, I think Summer Ween uh, is in the summer, and then they're doing winter ween, winter ween this year in January. This would be a good pick for that. July was read a book that is set in the season we're currently in, so I chose Beach Read. Um, it was okay. Um, it was not, like, mind-blowing. I thought the romance was cute enough, but I, I think I'm spoiled by getting, like, I read a little bit deeper stuff than that, um, but it was cute, and the audiobook was really good, um, but I would recommend this if you're looking for something light. If you are looking for a beach read, uh, this is a good option. August was read a book that is a retelling, and this one was great and perfect because I finally got to read The Initial Insult, which is Gina's favorites. Like She loves this duology, The Initial Insult, and Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the second one, but you know what the second one is. And I read the second one, or I listened to them in audiobook while I set up my classroom for the school year. It was great. It was crazy. It was great and crazy. Um, I recommend this to anybody who wants to read something that feels like you're watching um, a 24-hour news channel or um, drama on, like, the e-network or something. Like, that's what this feels like. So, I don't know. This was really good. It was a good retelling choice. For September, I had a read a book that is a debut novel, and I chose The Henna Wars because it also coincided with the Buzzword of Thon. I think The Henna Wars is very good. I'm kind of regretting that I put it off as long as I did to read it because it was a really cute little book. Um, and I'm going to put this copy in with the other copy I have in my classroom for like a buddy read option. If any of my kids want a gay book, they ask for them all the time. So here it is. 
I lucked out again with the October that uh, it was read a book with an orange cover and I wanted to read a spooky book for October and I only had one more thing to go in the uh, books in the freezer challenge and that was an orange cover so I got to read Don't Fear the Reaper. I, I did a mixture of this one physically and audiobook and uh, I like them both. This is very different narration style than My Heart is a Chainsaw because My Heart is a Chainsaw really just puts you in one perspective. This is like a chorus of people's experiences and it keeps going back to different people but it is really like everybody. Um, I loved it. I can't believe I have to wait for the third one now. I'm scared to wait for the third one now because this one was so good. It built upon the concepts of the first one so well. It was so scary. <laughs> um, it was just very good. Uh, Stephen Graham Jones really does marry like horror and heartfelt stuff really well um, and this one is probably the best he's done it so far. November, which we are st <laughs> we're still technically in, um, read a book that was set in North Carolina. I chose eventually the Yanalasi writing camp for girls because it's based in North Carolina in like the mountains at a horse camp. I'm never escaping the horse girl allegations. Um, it was okay. It was it was weird. Um, it on paper should be what I want, right? Literary fiction, horse girl, historical fiction. This is made for me. It was not. Um, I think it was trying too hard to be edgy and not even in like a an actual edgy way but like your your super white conservative aunt considers edgy um so i read it uh it took place in north carolina i don't i i would probably pick up this author again i just don't know i don't know if my expectations would be met any differently the very last card pulled I've read technically before the month, but it, like I said, I've only got like a week where I can film and edit everything, so I wanted to make sure I got it read in time, um, was read a book that Books and Lala likes. There was only one option for me. It was supposed to be in the buzzword last year. I didn't read it. I had a student recommend it to me last year. I didn't read it, so Bunny was sitting there. It was staring at me. I'm so glad I read this book. It's so freaking weird. I... I don't know if maybe it's because it's fresh in my brain that I like it so much, but the meta concept of like creating something is always going to appeal to me. It's always going to appeal to me. And that's what this is. Like this idea of like, can you create a reality? Like, can you be so creative you can create your own reality? But again, it feels like a book taken from another universe. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, if you haven't read it, you should probably at least experience it. You might not like it, but at least you'll know what I'm talking about. Because it took me a couple chapters to realize what the heck was going on. Um, and I still have questions. I think I'm going to have to reread it at some point in the future to maybe try to answer those questions. Not now, obviously not now. Um, but I'm glad this is the pick that I chose for that card. So that is it. That is all the books that I read. That is the clips of me reading. Here's all the cards that I did. It was 12 of them out of the 52. So I'm thinking, hear me out. This is what I have read. This is what I haven't. Um, I'm probably going to do this again next year and I'm probably going to keep it a secret again next year uh, because it's really easy to keep a secret and it's just a fun little video to do. Um, also, it means I get at least 12 books read because one per book. Um, and sometimes I tried to do two, but it just didn't work out. Um, I, it was enough to do the one sometimes. But this was a fun experience. I'm going to publish the, like, challenge thing I've been keeping up with on Storygraph, I guess. And I would love to have people read along with me for these. But again, the secret thing, I'm sorry. It's just going to have to be me. Um, but you can use uh, my Goodreads to try to guess which ones these are through the year because I update that fairly regularly um, and put reviews and everything so you know it'd be fun to guess if you think that that was part of the Gina challenge like if that's off the wall for me to read is that part of this um, anyway I'm going to go spend money at Target now so Gina I hope you enjoyed this secret video um, you might be the only person who enjoyed this video but know that I enjoyed making it and I enjoyed getting to pull from the secret stack every month. Uh, that was one of the highlights of my year was getting to pull those cards. You are so creative at the options you put on them and I cannot wait to get some of them. I know there's one that says uh, a book that Stephen picks out for you so I'm actually really anticipating getting that one at some point. <laughs> um, but they will live in here or they will wait till next year.